Well, with me are Chris Leslie, Labour's Shadow Chief Secretary to the Treasury, and John Cordwell, who's an entrepreneur and founder of Phones for You. And we're also joined from Westminster by the Financial Secretary to the Treasury, the Conservative MP, Sajid Javid. John Cordwell first. You heard in Faisal's piece there that the British gas boss has decided to forego his bonus. Pretty canny move, isn't it? It is. Um, on the one hand, you know, it's his responsibility as a corporate chief executive to maximise the profits. On the other hand, of course, people are hurting. The, uh, the cost of living is going up way in excess of pay rises. Energy is going up phenomenally. And so I think it's quite a smart uh, and quite an honourable thing to do, actually. Well, Sajid Java, do you want more energy bosses and other bosses, indeed, to follow the British gas boss lead? Well, that, that's a decision uh, for bosses, uh, but it, it is uh, a welcome news. But the important thing is that we keep working hard to find ways to reduce bills. We do have uh, some answer to that, such as legislating to put people on the lowest tariff and having an annual competition test, as well as looking at some of the levies. And these are practical solutions. The only thing Labour's come up with at the moment is a price con. Oh, but you haven't nailed it down, have you, as we just heard from Gary there? Well, we're still working on some issues, and when we've got the autumn statement coming up uh, in, over the next uh, few weeks in, in December, we will be able to look at what other action we can announce at the time. But some action we've already taken, but something we're also determined to do is not to come up with new charges that will push energy prices up, such as uh, the one Labour supports, which is a decarbonisation uh, commitment, which will push up energy bills by £125 for each person each year. OK, can you promise then that in the autumn statement that will herald a reduction in people's bills? I'm not going to promise anything about the autumn statement right here and now. We'll have to see what's in it when it comes out. But what I can promise is that we take cost of living challenges very seriously. Part of dealing with cost of living is having an economic policy that is creating growth and creating jobs. And what we do uh, believe is that you need a successful okay. economic policy to deal with that, unlike okay. Labour that thinks you can just come up with gimmicks. Well, Chris Leslie, you've come up with another what Sajid Javid would call a gimmick today. Uh, tax breaks to encourage firms to pay the living wage. The problem is that uh, there's some authoritative estimates that 300,000 people would lose their jobs if that was implemented. Well, I don't believe that would be the case. In fact, what we have to do is take action, not just the words, uh, the lethargy that we've seen from the minister there, to deal with the low-pay emergency that we have in this country. I mean, it's not just well, the slowest... Well, what about that 300... Well, I mean, this is an just, authorative me, estimate. Let me, the Resolution let me Foundation and the IPPR say that, uh, that 300,000 people would lose their jobs. I, I think that if we can do more to help ensure that people get a fair day's pay for a fair day's work, that would be widely received. And, in fact, at the CBI today, there's been quite a warm reception for the notion that we should give incentives to businesses to try and do better. For example, okay. under our plan, what we want to do is uh, allow some of those tax and national insurance benefits that might be saved uh, by the Exchequer to be returned to businesses as an incentive to encourage them to well, pay more. That living okay, wage let, let me, let really matters John, because a fifth okay, let me bring of in the John country, Cordwell a fifth here. of okay. the working people yep. don't get paid I just want that to living ask wage. John Cordwell here. You've so sold your phones for you business now, but did you pay your employees a living wage? Could you afford to do that? <laughs> there was no such thing as living wage then. It was quite well, some time ago. It's but, whatever you say it is. But what I, what I always try to do is pay a very competitive wage that motivated people to perform and to want to stay with the business. You know, in any business, the cost of attrition, losing your employees, is huge. And I, I think, you know, if employers can afford to pay the living wage, it's quite a smart thing to do, but they've got to have the whole package that goes with that, the motivation of the people, the career progression, not just a minimum wage. I hear, I uh, read that you also pay the highest income tax in Britain, so presumably you'd agree with the Sainsbury's chief executive who says that tax is a moral issue for business, would you? Absolutely, more so than ever in this day and age where, where we've got such huge national debt. You know, Britain is in a real hole, as a lot of other countries are, and we need to all get out of it together. And I don't think we can get out of it if corporates are taking away their, their profitability and hiding it um, in foreign territories. Uh, it's their legal right to do so, but I absolutely agree with Justin King that it's immoral. Sajid Javid, let's face it, you wouldn't be t we wouldn't be talking about this now, and the Sam Laidlaw, the British gas boss, would not be foregoing his bonus, were it not for the fact that Ed Miliband um, uh, pledged to freeze energy, energy prices. 
Well, I don't think that's right at all. And interestingly there, you know, you had Chris said that the CBI gave this proposal a warm reception. I think what the head of the CBI actually said was that Labour's policies make the hair stand up on the back of his neck. Now, if Chris thinks that's a warm reception, I hate to think what he thinks a cold reception actually is. The reality is... The fact is, is that they've, Labour's set the agenda here and you're running to catch up now with the autumn statement, aren't you? No, not at all. I mean, what we're doing is that we're setting out our economic policy. We're dealing with Labour's recession, which was the deepest in living memory. It's bringing about growth. There's a lot more to do, but the economy is creating jobs. And the best way for people to raise their income, raise their living standards, is also to make sure we have an economy that's growing jobs. He doesn't, okay. look, Cathy, he doesn't understand that, I think, for the first generation for a long time, uh, this link between a, a growing economy uh, and family uh, hou household finances has been severed because for most people, uh, you know, life is get, getting a lot harder and they do not feel better off. And Sajid thinks that the cost that? of living crisis isn't part of the economic policy. It's J vitally I'm trying to bring part John of our I can agree with part of that point, but, you know, the, the simple fact is that we massively overspent during Labour's time. To rescue the banks, and though. That's, so well, the no, 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 not, not, not to rescue the banks. No, to buy were, votes. To uh, buy we votes. Labour bought votes no. with the national balance sheet and left a dreadful challenge for Tories. And I'm not here to preach politics at all. It's the way I see it. The, the Tory party inherited a dreadful financial situation. And on as a Tory donor that, yourself, would you, I, would the hair stand up on the back of your neck if, if Ed Miliband, <laughs> were you helped, you helped Bill Cash's re-election campaign? I helped Bill Cash, campaign. that was a European a, issue. Who's, oh, okay, fair enough. But would you, would, does uh, the prospect of an Ed Miliband premiership make the hairs on the back of your neck stand up? Do you know, most politicians make the hairs on the back of my head stand up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you show me a politician that really, truly believes in trying to make Britain right, rather than buying votes for the next election, We've got to try that'll right be right. the politician that I support. We've got to try and and I, right. I suspect tonight hasn't changed your views on Not that. Not at all. <laughs> Sergeant Javid, John Cordwell, uh, Chris Leslie, thank you very thank much you. for joining me.